This is yet another day that the Lord has made and given unto us that we may rejoice and be glad in it. I take this moment to greet each and every one of you and to tell you that I love you in the love of Jesus Christ and that all of us, as many as have come to the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, as many as have been called by him, as many as have answered this call, we are sons and daughters of God. And we have a great responsibility to conduct our lives in such a way that it is well pleasing to him. And so this morning, I am so excited once more as we share the word of God together. And as I promised last week, we continue with our message, the, the armor of God, of course, part two. So please, let's turn our Bible once more to the book of Ephesians chapter 6 and reading from verse 10 all the way to verse 18. So, and I'll read. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wills of the devil. For we wrestle not against fresh, fresh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand stand therefore having your wings greet about with the, with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet showed with preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmets of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Hallelujah. So we are encouraged by the word of God. And the way he begins, he says, finally. So the, when you hear the word finally, it means there were previous instructions. It means there were previous conversation. So we are coming to the final of the thing. And as I said last week, every time you read uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, more so this part, you cannot read it in isolation of Ephesians chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. Because we have been called to take the full armor of God, to be able to withstand against the evil day. Which day is this? Is it a certain day? No, actually this day we live in is an evil day. We live in the day when this world is controlled by the wicked one. We live in this world, yet we are not of this world. So we, by nature, the fact that we find ourselves living in this world, which is not our world, we can easily say we are in the enemy territory. Remember when Jesus was about to go back to heaven in John chapter 17, he prayed to his father, Maybe we can go quickly there to see his mind concerning us that were being left as he went. John chapter 17. The Bible reads, This word spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou have given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God, 
and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on earth, and have finished the work which thou gave to me. And now, O Father, glorify me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto men, which thou gave me out of the world. Thy they were, and thou gave them to me. They have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gave me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed those things that, that thou didst send me. I pray, I pray not for the world. I pray for them, verse 9, I pray not for the world, but for them which has, thou hast given me, that they were thy, and all mine are thy, and thy are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thy own name those whom thou have given me, that they may be one as we are one. Hallelujah. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those thou have given me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of prediction that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I come to thee, and this thing I speak in the world, that they may, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world have hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but thou should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is a truth. And as thou hast sent me to the world, even so I also sent them into the world. And for their sake I sanctify myself, that they might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray, pray I for this alone, but for them also which shall believe on me, through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gave me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as I, as we are one. Hallelujah. So we see Jesus has prayed for us. Jesus have desired that we may be kept by the Father from the evil one in this world. He is not saying we be removed from this world, but he said clearly we are not of this world. And it is important to understand when the Bible says here, take the full armor of God. When it tells us to put on the breast, plate of righteousness, the belt of truth, this belt of truth, I want to deal with it today. This belt of truth was a belt that the Roman soldier would put and all his ammunition, the sword, he would put it in that belt. So the, what is this armor? What is this belt? And when you read the scripture, you'll understand, yes, it's called the belt of truth. Of course, God's word is the truth, but in verse 17, he says that we may take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So what is this belt of truth? I dare say it is now the new belief system that we are called into. It is that understanding of who now we have become in Christ. It is that whole belief system that comes through the renewing of our mind, the quickening of our spirit, understanding the whole purpose, the whole plan of God, understanding how we ought to conduct ourselves. This is the belt of truth. You need to, to have that belt because from it, you hang every other weapon. So your belief system is so key. Many a times, people are oppressed by what they believe. Remember the scripture say, as a man thinking, so is he. And you see, you think based on your belief system. The thoughts that you formulate, 
the way you conduct yourself is actually governed by the way you believe. If you believe you are weak, you are weak. So now here we are told, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. So we are in this world. It is important to understand we are not part of the world. The scripture says so. Even us, ourselves, we know so. For the Holy Ghost witnesses, and we can see we can't fit in this world. This world is corrupted. This world does, does really need us because we bring forth the message of the cross, the gospel, so that they may be saved. We can see that the hope of this world is actually the church. It is you and I. We carry the hope of bringing a total transformation to this world. Otherwise, the world by itself is totally lost, condemned, lost. But we bring forth this culture, this belief system from God's kingdom. And Jesus said, as my father you sent me, so I have sent these persons to this world. So you are here in this world, in this enemy territory, courtesy of Jesus Christ. And so you need not to fear, for he has prayed to his father. He himself witnesses and he says, of all the men that God gave him, not one of them was lost. Not one. Not one of them was lost. Not one of them. All of them he kept except that Judas, the son of prediction, so that the scripture may be fulfilled. And so all of us, we should have this confidence that it is impossible to be lost. It is impossible to be beaten down by the wicked one. It is impossible to lose, though we may be in his territory. But also it is important to understand, the Bible says we should not be ignorant of where we are. We should not be ignorant of the territory we are, that we are in the enemy territory. And we have been recruited to fight in a battle. The battle of changing people's mind. The battle of revering the true God. The battle of revering the Savior of the world. The battle of bringing forth the kingdom of God. We are here in this world. So that God can work through us. So that the scripture or our prayer. That our Lord Jesus Christ taught us can be fulfilled. That thy kingdom come. Thy will be done here on earth. As it is in heaven. We are the one who carries that mandate. So we must put on the armor of God. We must put that breast. That belt of truth. We, that's how do you put it. By renewing your mind. By beginning to understand the mindset of God. By beginning to understand what God's purposes are. What the plan of God is. So that we can enter in that belief system. Without that belief system then you don't have where to hang your weapon. You cannot afford not to be renewed in your mind. Let's just see what Paul says to the Romans. Romans chapter 12. About this renewing of our mind. Listen. Romans chapter 12 from verse 1. He says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. This is wearing the belt of truth. Beginning to present ourselves. Beginning to have a change of our belief system so that through this we can be able indeed to do that which we are called to do. So we are called to, to present ourselves as holy, as living sacrifices. And he continued to say, do not be conformed to this world. You have to have this mindset, this understanding that you know what? I am not of this world. Though I be in the world though i be in the world i'm not of the world but i have a mission here on earth i have a mission here on in this world to do god's will for jesus said as my father you sent me in the world and i'm not of the world so have i sent this man that you have given to me into the world 
though they are not of the world. Hallelujah. And he prays, though we are in this world, we may be kept by our Heavenly Father from the evil one. So none of us should be afraid. You are not alone. You are with the Father. God is with you. Though you are in the world, though you are facing an enemy, the enemy of your soul, yet you are not alone. And that is what you have to understand. That is the truth, that belt of truth. It is that culture, that understanding, that belief system that needs to be within you. That you know what? I belong to God. I'm a child of God. I'm blessed of God. God is watching over me. God is with me. God will give me victory. Having that understanding, having that truth is what is the belt because it is that which binds you. The belt, you know, you used to put it in your ruins. You know, and it, when we say ruins, we means also your whole being. The ruins is where your generation comes from. That's where you put your belief system, that's it, that you develop a new breed of people, a new culture of people that are not conformed to this world. So in chapter 12 and continue, he says, do not be conformed to this world, okay? But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For this, I say, through the grace given to me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself highly than he ought to think, but to be think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So you 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 need to think soberly to develop that new understanding, to develop the doing of God, to develop that culture, that that that, that beliefs system. That your whole wings, your whole generation should flow from. Where are you that you may be able to influence? You have to put on that breath, uh, that belt of truth. It is actually the beginning of the whole thing. You need to have that belt. You need to have that armor. Knowing that God is with you. Knowing that God is the one who has sent you into this world. Not underestimating the enemy. Knowing that by your own strength, you cannot face this enemy. He's stronger than all of us combined without God. But any one of us, even alone with God, we are stronger than him. That's the difference. All of us in this world combined. We cannot match the enemy, even the devil, with all our wisdom, with all our nuclear bombs, with all our understanding, we cannot match him without God. But any one of us, even just alone, together with God, the devil and all his demons, they cannot be able to match us. That's the thing you need to develop you are strong in God, that you overcome through God, that you make it through God, that God together with you, you are a mighty army that cannot be beaten, for the devil can beat God, but the devil can beat all men together one time. He's more clever than the whole world, but he is so foolish when it comes to the things of God, when it comes to the understanding of the wisdom that comes from God, he cannot match it. He is used by God to do and to fulfill things that he comes to regret later. He beats himself later. Sha! What did I just do? Let me just show you something in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. The Bible reads from verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with the excellence of speech or the wisdom or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. So when we bring the message, you don't need to be eloquent. You don't need to have that excellence of speech. That's not what matters. 
It is declaring the testimony of God that matters. So Paul says to the Corinthians, when I came to you, I never came to you with excellence of speech or of wisdom. When I declare the word of God to you, for I determined to know nothing among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. It is important for us to understand that the whole culture that we need to develop, this belt of truth is literally hanged upon the person of Jesus Christ and him crucified. That indeed he came into this world. He died according to the scripture. He was buried according to the scripture. And on the third day he rose again from the dead. And anyone who calls upon him will be saved and forgiven. And this is not of ourselves. It is not of works. It is of the grace of God. So Paul says to them, I just desire to know nothing among you. Do not want to know who was who, who was who, who was who. That's not important. What he wanted to know is whether Jesus Christ was among them. Hallelujah. He continued to say, And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. What we are called to bring forth, we are called to walk with the spirit of the living God. We are called to submit to the person of the Holy Spirit. And that's a culture you need to develop. We need to develop to have our this belt of truth. The, the whole system of our belief system need to be based on the person of God. His working, his word, the whole thing, the whole culture. We are being translated, remember, from the kingdom of this world or the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. We need to develop that culture, that understanding. We need to face everything based on that belief system, not the belief system of this world. That's why Paul says he did not want to know anything among them. Who was who? Who was a celebrity? Who was a who? Who was a leader? Those things do not matter and they don't matter in the kingdom of God. What matters is, have you believed in the Son of the living God? Have you surrendered to Him? Is He the one who is leading you? When you speak, do you speak to bring Him honor, to bring Him glory? Do you allow corrupt words to come out of you or have you by your own decision, based on God's word, based on this new culture you have acquired, put away the old man and you desire to glorify Jesus Christ. So he continued to say that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So we don't come bringing to you the latest way of communicating so that it may look powerful. We come in humility declaring God's words to you so that your faith may not rest on wisdom of words, on wisdom of men, but your faith may rest on the power of God who raises the dead. Hallelujah. Verse 6 says, how be it? There is wisdom. We speak wisdom in the spirit. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect? When we mature, we need to entertain, as Ephesians says, that we, God may grant unto us a heart of wisdom, a heart of revelation of him. So we speak wisdom, not that we walk in foolishness, as the world would want then us to believe or to think we are. We are not foolish. We are wise. We commune in wisdom. We are intelligent. We have been quickened by God. We are clever for we can see things that even a professor in this world cannot see. We are intelligent in all matters. Though we be in the world, we are not of the world. So we carry both the intellect in the, of the world and of the kingdom of God. As the scripture says in the book of Acts chapter 7 concerning Moses, that Moses was learned in all the wisdom of Egypt. And then he was now captured into the wisdom and into the knowledge of his God. 
That's the difference. As Paul argues and he says, if someone then would boast, he was also a Jew, a Hebrew of Hebrews, a teacher of the law, a Pharisee. But those things, they not matter. They matter in the world. But that doesn't mean we are not intelligent, we are not clever. No, we are. We are schooled. But those are not the things that moves us. The things that moves us is now we are schooled in the wisdom of God's kingdom. So he says, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that comes to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Hallelujah. There is a wisdom. Remember in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10, the Bible says that we are called of God that we may show forth his wisdom, his manifest wisdom to the principalities and to the powers. And God is able to do above exceedingly beyond that which we can pray, think, or even imagine by the power that works within us. So we are not weak. We are not unwise. We are very wise. We have the wisdom that is of God. The wisdom that comes by the Holy Spirit. We are able to, inter to intellectually uh, convey God's message. We are able to perceive that which the natural mind cannot perceive. We are able to see that which the natural eye cannot see. We are able to hear that which the natural ear cannot hear. But we hear the conversation that God says on in heaven. Jesus says in John chapter 16, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will tell you of things to come. He will lead you into all truth and he will tell you that which he hears. So we are interested. There is a wisdom that is of mystery, that is of God. That every wise person must aspire to get. Not just the wisdom that is in this world. And that doesn't mean that as a person who is in this world, you should not acquire the wisdom of this world. Of course, you should be well educated. But you should go beyond that and acquire the wisdom that also is revealed by the Spirit. So he says, but we speak the wisdom, verse 7, of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained. There is a wisdom that is ordained of God before the foundation of the world for our glory. Verse 8 says, which none of the princes of this world knew. The devil did not know it. Though he be wise in his own way, though he be clever, he be crafty, there is some things he doesn't know. God is the wisest of all. For he is the creator of everything. So there are things the devil don't know. There are things the angels don't know. There are things the princes even of this world don't know. There are things that are not known. So this, of course, this princess is speaking here. He's speaking of the devil and his cronies. And of course, his readers who are in the world. So he says, none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If the devil knew that Jesus going to the cross we lead an exodus of men and women from his kingdom to the kingdom of God. He would have worked day and night not to permit Jesus to go to the cross. But because he did not know it, he worked day and night to lead Jesus to the cross. That is the wisdom of God. Hmm? That's why the Bible says, For we know that all things work together for good. So it doesn't matter what the enemy may be doing. God is able to turn it for good, for your own glory, for his own glory. That's why the Bible says you should not fear. You should have this culture, this mindset that you know what? All things are working together for good. Though you may not be understanding what is happening, but you must have this mindset, this culture, this belt of truth. You must wear it that all things work together for good for them that love God. And if you love God, then you know that all things are working together for you. And you need not to be afraid. You need not to be shaken. We need not to be shaken. For he says, For which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, 
eye has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have it entered the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. So we have the Spirit who revealed things that I have not seen, ear have not heard. All of us, we can acquire to this. We are actually called to acquire to this. That's why Jesus says it is to your advantage that I go, so that I may send the Holy Spirit. And now we have been sealed by that same Spirit. And He's busy renewing our thinking, renewing our mind, and calling on to us to put on this belt of truth around our wings. Around our wings. Let us put on this belt of truth. Let your mind be Understand the full culture, the new culture. Let the new culture of God's kingdom be the one that dictates you. Not your natural culture. Your natural culture is lesser to the culture that you have acquired from God. And if your catch, in your culture there is something that is contrary to God, then you can't submit to that your culture. You have to submit to the culture of the kingdom of God. We must be influenced by the newness that has come. The newness of God's kingdom. We have been, must be influenced so that we can be able to overcome the wicked one. So he says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wells of the devil. You cannot be able to without having this new mindset. Without this belt of truth. Because the enemy will keep on throwing into your mind. Things that are contrary to the newness of God's kingdom. To the new culture you have received. Let your heart, let your mindset, let your whole being put on it. Put on it this new belief system. Hallelujah. We are called to put on the belt of truth. We are called to renew our mindset. We are called to understand the new culture we have been given unto. Then he continued to say that we must put on the breastplate of righteousness. You see that belt, it was, that of, it was to throw around the, the chest all around the heart. We have to take care of our heart. From the heart, the mouth speaketh. So we must be able to put on breastplate of righteousness. You know, our heart must embrace righteousness. We must embrace righteousness. Hallelujah. We must embrace righteousness. We must allow ourselves to embrace righteousness. Hallelujah. Hmm? What does then say? It means then we must allow that our heart. Because remember Jesus is from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. What do you speak? What is in your heart? You can tell by what you speak. Do you speak fear? Do you speak faith? Do you speak God's kingdom? What does your heart delight in? Who does your heart believe? For with the heart a man believeth unto righteousness. We must put on that belt, that breastplate of righteousness. We must have that belt around us. Because we are facing a formidable animal here, or this enemy, the devil. By our own self. And he would like us to submit to the culture of this world. All day long he works so that we can fail to put on this, this belt of truth, this breastplate of righteousness, so that he can be able to penetrate his arrows in our lives. But God is with us. He should not be afraid. 
We should literally allow ourselves to be transformed, to be renewed, to be changed by the living God. I don't want to belong so that you can be able to comprehend, you can be able to meditate and understand the things that God wants you to understand. But I'll, base, I'll quickly summarize it to you like this. Put on that belt. Let the whole belief system be dictated by the word of God, by the plan of God, by the purposes of God, by the Holy Spirit. And you shall see indeed who you are. For as his father sent him, so he has sent us into this world. You are not here accidentally. You are here because God wants you to be here. And you should do exactly like Jesus did. He finished the work his father called him to do here on earth. We have a duty. We have responsibilities that God has given unto us. Of course, as many as are mature. If you are still a baby in Christ, continue taking the milk of the word of God so that you may grow thereby. But don't be afraid, for he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. May God bless you as we wait to meet next time so that we can conclude this message. God bless you and God keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon thee. May he bless you in your going out. May he bless you in your coming in. May you be blessed in the city. May you be blessed in the field. May that which you touch to do be blessed of God. And may indeed God establish that which he has given you to do to the glory of God in Jesus' name. Until next time, cheers, I sign off.